This is the biceps muscle and the name means two heads. There is a short head and there is a long head. The short head arises or attaches into the coracoid process which comes as an extension of the scapula. The long head is, is quite fascinating. It runs up through a groove, it then enters into the shoulder joint, runs over the top of the head of the humerus and attaches into the top of the glenoid fossa which is the little cup that the shoulder rotates in. There are only two tendons in the body that run inside a, a joint. There's this one and there's a little muscle called the popliteus behind the knee which also does that. Otherwise, tendons never run through joints. This is a picture, actually, of the long head as it runs up through the groove in the humerus. It runs underneath a ligament and then it enters inside the joint, inside the joint capsule, and attaches to the glenoid fossa. Now, both heads form large muscles which join together in the middle and these are across your upper arm and these are a power muscle. They then form into one tendon. This tendon runs across the elbow joint and attaches into a tubercle on the, uh, just next to the olecranon, so a tubercle on the ulnar bone. Now this is a very complex muscle because it runs across three joints when it acts. It acts across the shoulder joint, it acts across the elbow, main elbow joint, and it also acts between the two bones of the forearm, the ulna and the radius. When this muscle contracts, it works across all three joints. So the first is that the long head of the biceps will pull the head of the humerus in and down. So the head is now snugged firmly against the glenoid fossa. This will put it in a position to, for the actual final movement across the shoulder joint, which is flexion, which is lifting your upper arm forward. The second action, which is one of the, which is a second primary action, is that it acts across the elbow joint and it causes the elbow joint to flex. So that means to bend upwards. And the third, which occurs across the radio ulna joint, is as since it only the, the tendon only pulls on one of the of the bones, you will get a rotation of the forearm which will rotate it into what's called supination, which is that it will rotate around so that your palm comes upwards. So if you put all these three movements together, if you imagine that your arm's lying down at your side, if you were to lift your hand up to look into your palm, that, those are the three movements that your bicep would do. It would rotate your hand round to your palm, so your palm's up. You would flex at the elbow, and, this, and the last is you would lift your arm up to come close to your head. Or as another thought, if you were to put the palm of your hand onto your forehead, those are the three movements of the biceps muscle. There are two trigger points in the biceps muscle. Each is in the center of the two bellies of the muscle. And when the trigger points are activated, they cause pain primarily 
at the top of the shoulder and at the elbow. They cause not a lot of pain in the center of the muscle itself. And this is again a good example of how trigger points can refer pain away from where they are. Each trigger point has the same distribution, primarily pain over the front of the shoulder or pain over the elbow.